The Dana 30 front axle is the underdog of front axles, but if it's properly built up, I think it could easily handle up to 35, even 37 inch tires. Guys, I am Dustin Adam Off-Road. Thanks for stopping by and checking out today's video. We're in the Adam Off-Road Garage building up a high pinion Dana 30 axle. I just spent a couple hours this morning pulling out the low pinion and in this video I want to talk about what are the advantages to building up a high pinion Dana 30 versus a low pinion Dana 30. Let's get to the video. So one advantage to doing this swap is the axle was fairly cheap. I found this axle for 100 bucks at a junkyard it came out of a 1995 jeep cherokee xj and it was fairly complete these are super common axles and you can find them anywhere from a 2000 all the way as early as 1990. when you go to look for these axles just make sure that it's in a vehicle that doesn't really look like it's been wheeled hard maybe it doesn't have a lift kit it looks fairly stock it hasn't been in a wreck just be careful when buying these axles you just don't want to buy one and get it home and then realize the tubes are bent or there's damage that you didn't see before. Other than having all these great spare parts for the trail is that most of the parts that are on the low pinion will fit on the high pinion. So we have the upper spring perches, all the lower and upper control arms. It's an exact fit so we don't have to make any modifications to fit it up into the Jeep where you know other axles we may have to make modifications this one is a direct swap from the high pinion to the low pinion now typically when you buy your housing you'll have a choice between buying one with 307 gears which is a manual xj or 355 gears which is an automatic xj if you buy the one with 355 gears you will have to replace the carrier if you plan on re-gearing the high pinion axle numerically higher than 373s now there were some high pinion 30s that had 373 gears if you're lucky you can find one you can still use that carrier but in my case i'll be using the carrier from this low pinion axle which is reusable and transferable over to the high pinion because it's set up with 410 gears numerically higher than 373s so that just means if you're swapping a hp 30 from an xj into a tj that you can also swap over the carrier as most tjs have stock gearing on the numerically high side of the carrier brake so another advantage that the high pinion dana 30 may have over the low pinion dana 30 is the low pinion gear has this crush sleeve on the pinion gear so when you go to set up the preload hp30 doesn't have this and it's a lot much more simple just using shim packs now by design on the hp30 we have the pinion on top of the ring gear whereas the low pinion 30 has it on the bottom this is the 355 gears ring and pinion and carrier out of the high pinion dana 30 and on the right here is the 410 gear set ring and pinion out of the low pinion Dana 30. So allegedly the high pinion Dana 30 has by design a stronger gear set in the way that the pinion meshes with the gear. So you can see that the gears are totally opposite or mirror imaged if you will. This one is called a reverse cut and this one's a normal cut. Now as the drive shaft loading up the pinion on to the gearing gear so it's moving counterclockwise to move the wheels forward the pinion gear is actually driving on the more stronger side or drive side of the tooth of the ring gear whereas the low pinion gear which would be on the bottom side of the gear is actually driving or loading the pinion driving the ring gear on the coast side or the weaker side of the tooth of the gear you can see that on this side we call that the concaved side of the tooth and then on the back side here is the convexed side and they're claiming that this side is the stronger side where you want to drive the ring gear 
So now I'm curious as to why Jeep would even think to put a low pinion Dana 30 front axle under the Wrangler. It just doesn't make sense when you have a high clearance, high pinion Dana 30 as an option. In my last video, we installed a one inch body lift and I mentioned that I wanted to do a high clearance fuel tank and belly skid. Well, comparing these two axles, the high pinion is considered high clearance. Because the drive shaft is going to be up higher now, it's going to be able to clear rocks and different obstacles better and perform better on the trail than the low pinion Dana. And it will solve a lot of problems under the Wrangler. So the first problem is uh, n vibrations. A lot of people, when they lift up their Jeeps, they get vibrations at the pinion. So my four inch lift here, I had to clock the low pinion up to about four and a half degrees to get the sweet spot within one degree on the drive shaft. Well, with a high pinion Dana 30, I only have to clock it up maybe degree and a half, maybe two degrees, and I'll be able to still be within caster. Now, caster is a huge thing when it comes to these axles is it's not adjustable and you have to cut and turn C's to properly get the right caster on these axles. Well, with swapping over to the high pinion, this does help with caster. It doesn't solve it. It's not perfect, but it makes it to where you don't really have to clock the C's to get, you know, decent caster. I'm not going to say it's perfect. So what I've done is I have taken all of these measurements and put it on paper. I've got it all charted up. The, the main difference is between clocking the pinion at zero, two degrees and four and a half degrees and seeing the difference in where the C's are in relationship to the pinion. So I think you're going to be interested. Let's go ahead and check out what data I have on this paper over here. These numbers don't mean anything that you would use when, you know, adjusting your pinion or trying to figure out caster. These are just numbers that I've put down in measuring the same exact spots on the high pinion and the low pinion for pinion and inner seas or caster. And basically it's the relationship here between the pinion angle and the caster. So as we clock the pinion up from zero degrees up to two to four to get the sweet spot on the drive shaft, Notice what happens to the inner C angles. So at zero, we have 11, and at two, we have nine. So as we increase the pinion angle, we lose caster. And that's gonna be the same for the low pinion. At zero, two, and a four and a half, we start at 13.6, and we move on up to 9.1. Now, on my Jeep, which has a four inch lift, I had to clock the pinion up at four and a half degrees and that gave me about a nine caster. Now this is not real. Like I was saying, this number doesn't mean anything. This is just what I measured on the lower C where the ball joint is. The, the machine surface flat on the, where the ball joint, which doesn't mean anything. It's just a number that I measured on both of the axles. That way we can have some control in the data. Pinion angle is always going to be precedent over caster in the fact that you, you want to try your best to eliminate vibrations. On a factory Jeep, pinion angle is usually going to be at zero, and the drive shaft and the pinion are going to have a difference of angle between like one degree. So this is ultimately what you're going to see on a factory Jeep. You're going to have a zero on the pinion, 11 caster and you know a 6.1 on a spring perch this is a stock jeep this is stock stock xj stock wrangler now what's interesting here is that because our drive shaft is higher on the pinion high pinion um, we won't have to now we can now eliminate the four and a half degree clock of the pinion and we'll be more around the one and a half to two. So look what happens to the caster. It's about the same. At zero degrees, you have the best lubrication on the pinion. It's been designed that way at factory heights. So that's why I say anything over four inches, you're going to cut and turn C's, but then you're also really losing the way that pinion is designed to lubricate itself. So just keep in mind that now we are going to the high pinion Dana 30. We don't have to clock C's because I only have to really clock it now around the two, maybe two and a half at most. And I'll still be between the five 
and 10 degrees caster, which that number doesn't mean anything to you. You have to take your Jeep over into an alignment shop and figure it out that way. So these are gonna be the advantages of the HP Dana 30. And on paper, if you're gonna build a Dana 30, you might as well spend a little bit more money and acquire the HP 30. It's gonna solve some problems underneath the Jeep. It's high clearance, better lubrication, better caster, all of that is going to be an improvement, especially with the improved internal design. It's just overall a better axle to spend your money on if you're going to be building a 30, in my opinion. So I am super excited to be moving on to the next video, which we're going to be stiffening up this axle. I've got axle sleeves, trusses, brackets, and things like that to stiffen it up because ultimately I'm going to be re-gearing this axle and I want it stiff for those gears. So in the next video we're going to be working on all of that and basically be building a ultimate dana 30 so i'm super excited and we will see you guys over on the next video so if you guys like this content be sure to like it subscribe if you're new and we will see you guys on the next video have a good day peace out